Hi everyone, this is Sean from Hancock Guitars. I'm here today to introduce the ALS fret dressing kit. I'm going to run through how to use that one to do a fret dress on this guitar, which has a lot of fret wear. So these kits consist of a bunch of different tools. You've got a fret dressing file for crowning tops of the frets, a fret leveling file, which is diamond, a fret end dressing file, a set of fingerboard guards, two sheets of sandpaper and steel wool. If you want to upgrade to the diamond kit, you'll get these two offset diamond files rather than this file and 300 grit and the 150 grit. I've taken the neck off the guitar to make it easier to do the fret dress. So the first step is going to be leveling out the frets and grinding out all of that wear that's been put in there by the strings over time. So we're going to use the fret leveling file for that one, the diamond fret leveling file. Before we do that though, we want to make sure that the top of the frets is relatively straight. You don't want the fretboard to be too convex or concave. So we're going to use the notch straight edge to check that and we just sit that over there. So we want that to be either straight or have a little bit of a convex bend, in other words, curving this way. And by a little bit, I mean maybe one or two tenths of a mil, not too much. You definitely don't want it concave. So I'm just gonna adjust the truss rod a little bit. I'll put that down while I do that. That's pretty good now, I can see that's rocking a little bit so we know that's a little tiny bit convex if you don't have the notch straight edge you can just use a steel ruler and place that over the tops of the frets it's not going to be as accurate as using the notch straight edge but it, it does just fine i like to put a piece of paper underneath the neck just to catch all those filings from the nickel frets we can dump that in the bin afterwards and we're just going to start by rubbing it with this fret leveling file so you don't want to be doing straight strokes in one area you want to spread it out over the whole fretboard and do nice circular motions and that's going to keep the frets even as you do it having said that work on the areas that have the most fret wear I should also mention that this kit's perfect for doing new guitars. The difference will be you're not trying to grind out the wear on a new guitar, you're trying to level out the frets that you've just put into the fretboard. So I'm just going to keep grinding that until all these wear patches are gone. I'm pretty happy with how that's come up. Basically every fret has the tops slightly ground off and those wear patches have been completely taken out. You see a couple of tiny little specks for instance there, I don't know if you can see it. That'll get taken out when you do the crowning. You don't want to take any more off the top of the frets than you have to. I should also mention that um, this technique and this kit's perfect if you've got like a couple of high frets and your guitar is buzzing on a few frets. It'll allow you to set up the guitar lower and not get fret buzz so it's good for that as well. So basically just look for seeing scratches across the top of each fret or the way across if you see those scratches you know that you've brought it down far enough now that those frets have been leveled we've got to put the shape back into them which is called crowning so I'm just going to draw what's happening so the fret starts off this sort of shape nice and round looking that's looking at the side of the fret when we level it off we're taking a flat spot off the top of it so this just gets removed which means the fret's too flat on top. And what we need to do is round that back off. So we're gonna use the fret file, which actually has a little curved trench in it, which is coated in either diamonds or a file pattern. And that's going to put that curve back into the top of the fret. We just wanna leave a little flat spot for now though. We're gonna leave the middle of the fret flat and just round it that much. At the end, when we do the polishing and sanding, we'll finally round that off completely around here. The reason that we leave that flat spot is if you try and round it completely off with the crowning file, there's a chance that you'll actually take it down too far. So that's like a safety thing, leaving that little flat spot. In terms of the frets that we've done, we want to see 
a little bit of these scratches still at the top of the fret after we've done the crowning. But another thing you can do is a, a bit of a trick, use a permanent marker like a Sharpie and just draw over that flat spot. And then you're gonna be able to tell when you've actually ground that to a nice narrow little band of middle. So I'm just gonna use the two types of files for this and show you the difference. We'll start with the, um, the diamond. So the diamond has two sides. It has a medium side and a wide side. These being medium frets, we're gonna use the medium side. So you can use either the um, 300 to start with. I'm gonna start with a little bit of the 150 and then switch to the 300. So you use the 150 to kind of take the worst parts of the flat opening off. I mean, these frets are not too flat, so we won't need much with that. And then switch over to the 300. Again, the narrow side of that. And the 300's gonna leave less scratches, so when you go to polish it, it's gonna be easier to polish the fret. So we're just looking to have the narrowest little bit of that permanent marker still showing. You just work the length of the fret. Probably like a half a millimeter of that permanent marker if you had to put an amount on it. I'm pretty happy with how that's come up. The other file option for crowning is the regular three-in-one fret file. I've put the medium burr into that one. There's three burrs, there's a wide, a narrow, and a medium. Medium's perfect for this size frets. This one isn't a diamond file like the other one. It's just a regular steel file. It's gonna have a different action and it, it's gonna leave a bit more scratching than the uh, diamond. So it's gonna need more polishing those scratches out. So you just need to be very gentle with this one. It's quite aggressive when it's brand new. Band of, uh, of pen on there. That's the crowning done. I ended up just using the 300 grit diamond file for all of the frets. They weren't too flat, so they didn't really need the 150 for the most part. And I didn't end up doing the last three frets because they hadn't had really much taken off the top of them. It was mainly this end where it had most of the wear that needed most of the work, which sort of makes sense. The next step's gonna be sanding and polishing the frets. So we're gonna do that with our sandpaper and these fingerboard guards, and then finally with some steel wool. So I like to start with the 180 grit. I usually just take a small piece off, maybe 50 mils wide, like that. And then we're gonna use these fingerboard guards, protect the rosewood fingerboard, and we'll start off by using the wide one here, and we'll probably need to use the narrow one when we get down this end where the frets are closer together. To prepare them, I like to put a bit of tape just to protect the fingerboard from the fingerboard guard. It's pretty smooth, but it is made of stainless steel, so there's the potential to actually scratch the, the delicate timber with the fingerboard guard. So just put a piece of regular, any sort of masking tape will work for that. And um, find a good trick is once you've got that tape, you can actually put some from this side, from the, the other side, and put it over the top like so. That's going to let you just sort of stick it down temporarily as you're using it and it also protects the fingerboard from perhaps the edge of the sandpaper rubbing against it. If I was doing the first fret, see it sort of sticks down by itself then. And the other thing is if you accidentally have a little bit of your sandpaper resting on there, it's not going to hit the fretboard, it's just going to hit the tape. So it's a good safety measure. You don't really have to tape the whole fretboard up or anything like that. So I just use my thumb behind the sandpaper and you're just really rounding the top part of that fret off and also getting some of the scratches out that will have gotten in it from the from the fret file so i sort of dig my fingernail in both edges that gets into the side of the fret and i kind of like to go at a diagonal so you see then the scratches from the sandpaper look different to the scratches from the file and you can see when you've really taken out the scratches from the file so it's a bit of freestyle with the 180. You're just trying to round it off nicely. Once you've done that, you can switch over to the 240. And my rule of thumb for the 240 is just about 10 strokes on each side and then about 20 strokes on top. 
seems to work quite well and that's ready for then the polishing so you can either do all 180 through all the frets come back and do 240 or you can do 180 240 for each fret as you go along that's the sanding done you can see how much sandpaper you use to just to do one fretboard it's actually quite a workout especially on your thumb i wouldn't like to have to do too many of these in a day but they've come up looking really good. I'm happy, nice and smooth and rounded off. So the next step's optional, and that's using the fret end dressing file. If your guitars had the ends of the frets rounded off very well before, you probably don't need to do this, but most guitars that come out of factories, they have sharp ends, and it's a good idea to use this one. So what you're gonna do with this is just take the little corners off the frets, and I just like to sit it fairly much upright on a 45 degree angle to the fret and just take a couple of tiny little passes off. You really want to get in the corner there when you're doing this. You don't want to leave like a little barb at the bottom of the fret. So really that's all you're doing is just a couple of very gentle passes off each fret. Now that those frets have had the corners taken off, the last step's polishing. Uh, so you can do this in two ways. You can go back to the fingerboard guard that you used before, and you can use that with the steel wall and polish the fret and go along all the frets like that. They're just basically rubbing it until it's shiny. The way I like to do it though is I like to polish the fretboard and the frets all in one go and that cleans up the fretboard, polishes the wood and then in the end what you'll need to do is just use some sort of lemon oil or my preferred one's Dr. Duck's Axe Wax. It's a great fingerboard conditioner and you'll rub that in and uh, rejuvenate the timber. So basically you're just rubbing the whole fretboard with that steel wall, including the frets. Rub it with the grain, don't rub across the grain if you can help it. If you rub across the grain, you'll see some little scratches in the tin, which don't look so good. Obviously don't do this with a maple fretboard with finish on it. You don't wanna be um, scratching that finish. In that case, you'd be using the fingerboard guard and, um, and just doing the frets themselves. So you'll need to work more on the high frets because there's more frets up that end. Basically, you just want to polish away until all the frets have a consistent sort of shiny patina to them. So that's come up really nice. All the frets in the fretboard, all that wear's gone. And the last step's to use a bit of fingerboard conditioner. So I'm going to use this Dr. Duck's Axe Wax. Basically, get a piece of cloth. I probably can just put it straight on the fretboard. Just about... I'm going to rub it in everywhere. You can let it sit for a minute and then rub it off, but I'm just going to rub it off. Basically just get in next to every fret, just get all the excess off. This stuff doesn't really hurt if you get a little bit on the finish, just wipe it off. It's actually made to be used on finish if you finish your whole guitar, like polish it up with it. There we go. One completely fret dressed fingerboard that'll just get screwed back onto the neck and the guitar can be set up. It should play like a dream. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel or hit the like button below.